Thank you for inviting me to present a new technique among the large choice of ultrasound tools of the label for pelvic scanning, real-time fusion imaging, and we are going to see its achievement and in, in its interest in pelvic endometriosis. What is it about? Fusion refers to alignment in space of various images from different routes. Actually, no imaging technique is neither sensitive enough nor specific to bring to the clinician the best diagnostic opt. Fusion imaging permits to display in the same time MRI and ultrasound data synchronize and get benefits of both devices in real time. Smart Fusion on Aplio 500 allows tracking of endovaginal probe position on real time. Probe is detected with, uh, by attaching a magnetic sensor and using the transducer in a magnetic field generated by a magnet placed uh, on a flexible arm. Procedure is very simple. First, CD pelvic MRI is loaded into the, the system. Then the patient is playing in the lithotomy position and the transmitter is located close to the tie in order to keep uh, the magnetic sensor within 40 centimeters of the magnet during the procedure. Final step, synchronization. That is alignment in space of MRI and US data by correcting position and angle of an image with respect to each other. So the Aplio display the 2D data generated from MRI data set. Sagittal T2 Weighted sequences were used for synchronization only with 2D view. On the same time, ultrasound perfect plane related is retrieved. Now, fusion step by step. First, you can see the, the, the adjustment of angle of the um, MRI data uh, with respect of the sagittal plane on ultrasound. Again, position and angle adjustment of the MRI uh, images. And correction also of angle. And then it's possible at the end of the synchronization to place some market point on uterian own to perfect synchronization. When synchronization is achieved, we can move easily uh, on MR of volume with real-time US scan displayed simultaneously. It's possible also to get transversal plane uh, with low resolution because it's not 3D sequences but 2D sequences. Seen years, fusion imaging has been the topic of several articles, especially in the guided biopsy field for hepatic lesion first, and then for prostate biopsy. And actually, this technology is commonly used in urological uh, units. For women imaging, stem studies were achieved also in prenatal diagnosis, particularly for fetal brain. And why in deep endometriosis? It's one of the hardest diagnoses uh, for, of, uh, for pelvic ultrasound, but which concern up to 50% of women affected by this pathology. Uh, many studies have demonstrated the accuracy of transvaginal ultrasound uh, for this pathology particularly as first step of diagnosis. Uh, here is a meta-analysis meta published in 2015, 
11 studies included, pre-surgical detection and surgical assessment, and you can see the mean prevalence of the main location of deep endometriosis, uterosacral ligament, retrovaginal uh, septum, vagina, and bladder. Sensitivity and specificity for transvaginal, transvaginal ultrasound for detecting deep and fetating endometriosis is very high. Uh, is, is specificity is very high, but specificity is lower as attending. And the, um, the authors demonstrated uh, a large heterogeneity in sensitivity. Uh, the, the points are very scattered. Another, um, another study on MRI this way, and as you can see, sensitivity and specificity for, for detecting uh, deep endometriosis are both very high. So, when we examine pros and cons for ultrasound and MRI, it will be very interesting, the, this technique will be very interesting, because ultrasound is the first line of investigation, and MRI are a low availability. It's a dynamic exhumation, it's possible to uh, diagnose uh, adhesion. It's an effective method for diagnosis. Uh, with high availability and low cost effectiveness. But MRI has a better accuracy expect, except for rectosigmoid, a higher agreement enter and intra observer, a large field of investigation, and no patient reliance. But for ultrasound, except endometrioma, experience is needed, particularly for deep endometriosis, and there's a high variability. For MRI, a low availability, a high cost, and it's a static examination. So, a first French study was published for fusion imaging. Uh, 20 patients, but a single radiologist, a pelvic, a pelvic expert, who made uh, both MRI and ultrasound and um, explored the main location of endometriosis uh, by TDS, MRI, and fusion imaging. And as you can see, the results are excellent, uh, except for ureters. But as you could see, it's a single radiologist, not a gynecologist one. No size information in this study. Uh, they excluded case of arterial position problem, and there's no surgical assessment. So we also investigate this technique in our department during nine months with two radiologists who made, who performing MR scan and one gynecologic exclusive sonographer um, for fusion real-time imaging. 22 patients included with previous uh, diagnostic of deep endometriosis by MRI. Um, you can see mean age, you can see interval time between fusion imaging and MRI. The mean size of the lesion are 23 millimeters, and um, the location as attending uh, uterosphacal ligament and uterophonix. And the, the um, technique is very simple. All scan perform in less than 20 minutes. No problem with achievement. But the re results are more mixed. In three cases, there's a clear cut disagreement between MRI and fusion reason. Two cases of bladder nodule and one case of problem between MRI and um, ultrasound about uterus flexion. There is a correct assessment in 63% of the case, and for the seven with not perfect valuation, I, I want to note that there's two only thickening of uterosacral ligament and three problems of labward synchronization uh, because of a difference of uterus position between ultrasound and MRI, and also no surgical checking. So I will show you some case with first correct assessment between 
MRI and ultrasound. Here you can see the doesn't work. Um, the, the MRI and the ultrasound and the market point uh, placed on uterine horn to improve synchronization. You can see also difference about uh, aspect of ovary because of the interval, interval time between the two exams. And here you can see the nodule, a large nodule in retroperitoneal space, indicting the, the wall of rectum. Uh, very well seen in MRI and the corresponding image in ultrasound, a large hypoechogenic nodule. It's possible also to make to place market points on the lesion to improve synchronization. And in transverse plane also When you turn around the, the probe, the nodule appeared in the, in the wall of the rectum as a hypocogenic uh, area. Here at the same. Another case, uh, 50 five years old non mesopausal woman with polymyoma uterus and there's a sumocausal one here, uh, which made synchronization, um, made, make synchronization um, uh, facility, and a large nodule um, with a follow-up of this nodule, um, the patient was quite asymptomatic. We can see the nodule here and the nodule here, uh, I as very, very similar image. In transversal plane also, the nodule on MRI and the nodule on ultrasound. Another case, 53 years old woman, past of infertility, Past of cystectomy for endometrioma and a large nodule in posterior vaginal fornix with involvement of rectal anterior wall. It is the synchronization, which is quite difficult because of the position of uterus and the nodule appeared as a triangular area here and here in the MRI with some hyperechogenic spot on the nodule. Last case, a newly parous woman, a history of dysmenorrhea and a vaginal nodule while seeing on MRI and the corresponding lesion on ultrasound fused to the cervix because here there is gel and no gel, of course, during ultrasound. The measurements are quite denting. Here, in the, in the interval time, an endometrioma appeared uh, on ultrasound, which didn't exist on MRI. With SMI, it's possible to um, examine the vascularization of the nodule and uh, the vascularization of uh, the vagina wall. And with a POI, now it's possible to reconstruct coronal plane in the same exam. Here. So two examples of disagreement between MRI and fusion imaging. First, it's the 34 years old woman with an endometrioma and the um, radiologist suspected a nodule in anterior wall of the bladder, which, which is, no, is unusual. And during fusion, there's no problem. Serosa is thin. 
and there's no nodule in the, in the anterior wall of the bladder. The same. Something here suspected on MRI and nothing in the, in the fusion. Another case of disagreement, a 41 years old woman with past of infertility. MRI was made for abnormal bleeding and the radiologist suspected um, nodule of uh, deep endometriosis in uterosacral ligament, 10 centimeters. The uterus is retroversed and during fusion, there is um, uh, an anterior position of the uterus and no nodule C in the, in the ultrasound. The same, the same case, no problem with uh, uterus. It's very mobile and uh, there's no nodule. Another and last use, A uh, 66 years old mesopausal woman, uh, history of breast cancer with Tamofen treatment, and an endometrial, endometrial thickening on ultrasound follow up. Uh, an MRI was made for this, and fusion imaging um, makes the image clear, the thickening correspond to myoma and to adenomyosis area here on MRI and here in the ultrasound corresponding. Same case. So in conclusions, for achievement, no problem. A short, a short learning curve for synchronization, but for a trained sonographer with skill in MRI imaging, a short execution time. Use whenever a previous MRI with CD-ROM is available, but some limitation when there is an intermediary position of uterus and all the studies till now without surgical proof. Interest, use of additional advantages of both techniques, follow up of endometriosis lesion only with a previous MRI CD-ROM, of course, improvement of isonographer to detect and identify correctly deep infiltrated endometriosis, and I think a training tool for the beginners. Thanks for your attention, and special thanks to Nadim Kafarani for his hope and his encouragement.